Hello and welcome to this processing tutorial about backgrounds. Today I will show you some simple ways to improve the background for your projects. For the example I decided to go with a kind of flowery pattern, first off on a simple white background. As you can see, although the pattern looks quite cool, the background is extremely boring. The easiest way to improve this is to change up the color scheme, which you can see in the next few examples. In order to do this, just change the color code in the background and stroke brackets. You can experiment with the color schemes a bit. For example, I found turquoise and green, red and yellow, as well as dark blue and white to be looking quite good. I still wouldn't really recommend this kind of background though, since a unicolored background always looks kind of boring. And that is exactly why today I put together an array of simple tricks that will greatly improve your background. So let's start with the first one. An easy to code but still very neat looking background is a gradient like this one. You can choose any colors you want for it. Um, first off you have to set the background color by typing background and then inside of it an RGB code. Um, this is the color that will be visible on the right hand side of the screen. Next off you will define a float variable with the value of width divided by 255 and after that you will have to open a for loop by typing for int i equals 0, i smaller than width, i++. plus plus. By doing this uh, you calculate every row of pixels on your computer. Inside of the for loop you will have to write stroke and then the first three numbers are an RGB code again. You can choose any numbers between 0 and 255. And the last number is the opacity. For this one you will want to write 255 minus i divided by l. And the next line of code is line i0 i height. It is as easy as that. As you can see, I have now applied this to the project, as you can see inside the draw bg function. And if I just quickly run it, you can see it already looks way cooler than a plain and simple unicolored background. There is another simple variant to a gradient uh, which I will show you right now. And in order to achieve this you will just have to add a divided by 2 to your float variable definition and a divided by 2 to the i smaller than width inside the for loop. And you'll have to add an extra line of code, which is line width minus i, zero width minus i, height. Okay, I've now applied this and in my opinion it looks especially good if you choose the same color for the image as the one you chose for the stroke in the background. As you can see, it does look pretty neat. Okay, this next one is a tiny bit more complicated, but in my opinion it does look really cool. As you can see, it is basically little randomized polygons on a plain background. Now for this example I chose triangles, but you don't have to go with triangles. By changing those numbers that I will change now, you can change the amount of nooks the polygon will have. Um, I will go with 7 now. As you can see, it works just fine. As I said, I think triangles look the best though. First off, to achieve this, 
you will have to set a background color as well. In my example, it's a dark red color. And then you will have to disable the outline by typing no stroke. After that, you will open up a for loop by typing for int i equals zero, i smaller than any number, it is the amount of polygons that will be on the screen, and i plus plus. Inside the for loop, you write push matrix, translate, random width, random height, and then it's time to define two new load variables, the rotation, which is named road, and the size and size they are there to randomize the size and rotation of the polygons after that you will have to choose a color it is randomized as well as well i would suggest going with a color that is quite close to the background color though because you don't want the background to be too distractive after that you can begin um, generating the actual polygons by typing begin shape and opening up another for loop for int j equals zero j smaller than the amount of nooks you want to have j plus plus inside that for loop you write vertex size um, multiplied by sine of two times pi divided by the amount no of nooks you want to have um, multiplied by j plus one plus the rotation and obviously the same with cosine to define the y um, coordinate of those nooks after that you will want to end the shape and pop the matrix and you are done i have now applied this and since it's, this is probably my favorite one i've decided to go with multiple color schemes for the first one it is the dark red one from the example okay the second color scheme is a dark blue and white one because i just really like that color scheme and the last example i have for this background is a gray and light blue color scheme because well it just looks awesome this next one is another one of those incredibly easy to draw but still very good looking backgrounds as you can see well i hope you can see it in the resolution i'm uploading it it's diagonal lines all across the screen and it is very easy first off to do this you have to set a background color, any color, and a stroke color for which you can choose any color as well. Then you're just gonna wanna open up a for loop in which you will type int i equals zero, i smaller than width divided by th three plus height, i plus plus. Inside the for loop, you want to write line i times three plus height, zero i times three plus height. As you can see here again, it will create those diagonal lines. Um, I as I said, I hope you can see it. And if I just quickly add another line of code, um, line i times 3, 0, i times 3, minus height and height, I will create lines from the other direction as well. As you can see, it also looks pretty neat. Okay guys, as you can see, I have now applied this and what I also did is increase the distance between the lines by changing all the uh, threes to fives, as you can see. So you guys can probably see it a bit better. And here we have the double lines. They look pretty cool in my opinion and I will quickly show you the singular lines as well just so you have a comparison here they are and in my opinion they look pretty sweet as well I think it is definitely safe to say that 
for me at least the last one is the coolest looking one but it has one huge disadvantage it takes ages to load as you can see that is not the background yet um, you are probably well waiting for it and I'll just speed the process up because it takes ages as you can see it is this super cool looking randomized background but the long load times basically make it inusable for animated stuff well I will show you a little trick though and um, yeah as you can see first you will have to open up a for loop by typing for int i equals 0 in smaller than 13,000 at least those are the values for full HD and i plus plus after that you're gonna want to write into the float loop uh, for loop sorry uh, float x equals random width and float y equals random height then you are gonna want to open up another for loop by typing for int j equals 0 j smaller than 400 and j plus plus inside that you are gonna want to write float next x equals x plus random minus 10 10 and float next y equals y plus random minus 10 10 after that you have to type float c equals well a randomized color you want N not too randomized only a bit randomized otherwise the thing will look crap i just use this dark grayish grayscale thingy then you want to set the stroke to that color and the next line of code will be line x y next x next y and the last two lines are just x equals next x and y equals next y okay guys i have now applied this and as you can see i used a non grayscale color this time for that you have to create a float array which you have to type all the three different values into and then put the stroke like this just quickly start it and speed up the process for you guys again okay as you can see this does look pretty awesome if you want to have the background more randomized you just have to increase the randomness in the color definition now let's talk about the little trick I wanted to show you okay guys in the first step you will want to add a variable p image bg and inside the setup function you will want to write bg equals load image data path bg.png and background bg and inside the draw bg function you have to add save data path bg.png in the first step you will have to disable those two lines just uh, well don't know why it is that way but you have to and then just generate the whole thing and I'll speed up the process for you again okay here we are now and now you can close it again and enable those two lines once again and disable the draw BG line and from now on you will just load the image this is way way faster as you can see and well it's not really cheating because it's still your program that generated that thing and if you ever want to change it you can just disable those lines enable the draw bg one change the stuff around and repeat all the steps okay guys this is all i have time for for today thank you so much for watching the video and if it helped you i'd be glad if you would leave a like or even tell your friends about it